white foam, the roar of powerful engines. The Navy's R-3Y takes off. Cargo carrier, troop transport, refueling tanker, hospital ship. Bow to stern, 144 feet. Four Allison turbine engines develop speeds up to 270 knots. Wingspan, 144 feet. Operational altitude, 30,000 feet. Combat radius without refueling, 1,150 miles. The R-3Y was built for a definite purpose. That purpose was built around a concept. That concept, strategic flexibility. Although we are not military strategists, we will create a hypothetical military problem and use a seaplane transport in combating that problem. Indochina, for eight years a battleground between the communists and the French. The war ended by giving the communists more than half of Vietnam and its natural resources. Although a line of demarcation was set at the 17th parallel, there is still political unrest. Let us consider the problem of supporting the free peoples of Vietnam in the event of a communist invasion across the newly established boundary. Several operations would begin to roll simultaneously. Six days and 1,200 miles from the battlefront. In Manila, the main body loads for the counterattack. The equipment is essential for a sustained attack. Trucks, jeeps, bulldozers, landing craft, all weapons of war. And there is a lot of truth to the old adage that a fighting man travels on his stomach. Loading for an amphibious assault has improved considerably since World War II. New methods of loading, lighter and faster equipment, the elimination of unnecessary items. Each has helped whittle down the costly time factor until the operation, although gigantic in scope, has become flawless in its execution. troops themselves, physically fit and so expertly trained in each individual task that all guesswork has been removed. These men are prepared for an emergency such as this. They know where they are going and why they are going. Actually, they are men of the 1st Marine Division. They know they will join other United Nations forces with whom they have been allied before. 7,500 men are involved in the loading of this particular ship all battle ready. Come along, starboard side. Any kinks they pick up will be ironed out by exercises topside as they move out across the South China Sea toward their hypothetical objective. At sea, other ships are added to the growing force. Destroyers, battleships, aircraft carriers, oilers, more troop ships, more cargo vessels. Each one a part of the convoy and finding protection in each other. Although the skies can be controlled, sometimes a sub can slip through in spite of the latest electronic equipment. And vital cargo or personnel never reach their destination. And even though rescue crews are quick to reach the survivors, the cargo can seldom be recovered. Land planes could be used, but... Strategic airfields are a prime target for enemy air action, and if rebuilt, can be destroyed again and again. Paratroopers, remembered for their gallantry in the face of enemy resistance, could also be used. But para drops are often dependent on wind conditions, weather, and terrain. Therefore, a seaplane transport may well be the answer to supplementing the fleet and land forces and spearheading an immediate attack. The Mekong River flows 1,600 miles through what was once French territory. Like the Mississippi, the Nile, the Rhine, and other large rivers of the world, the Mekong provides many natural runways on which the R-3Y can land and take off. Runways almost impossible to destroy.
naval underwater demolition teams, cooperating with friendly guerrilla forces, would chart the landing lanes and radio hydrographic information to the Flying Task Force Command Control. These men would clear the area of obstacles and with the assistance of friendly guerrillas, select and mark suitable beaching areas for the R3Ys up and down the riverbank. The river itself would be checked for depth, rate of flow, straight reaches, wind direction and velocity, and this information would be recorded and relayed to the task force command at mobile operational bases in the South Pacific. At these bases, extended hull bottom repairs are simplified and buoy time reduced by utilizing a beaching cradle designed for the R3Y. Self-powered and capable of being steered, the cradle approaches the seaplane from the aft end and mates while both the airplane and the cradle move toward the beach. In forward areas, M8 pressed steel mats could be used, where permanent dock facilities are not available. High and dry, the seaplane can be checked from stem to stern. If beaching is not necessary, maintenance can be performed right on the water. For refueling or defueling, adapters are installed in the hull below the left wing. This operation can also take place on the dock or in the water. Quick opening access doors and engine cowlings make engine inspection or repair a simple chore. Service crews can, if necessary, change engines while the airplane is waterborne. Other major items, such as props, leading edges, or float assemblies can also be changed in the water. Each of these items can be reached from within the airplane through a door and ladder arrangement in the main cargo compartment. With ground servicing completed, the seaplane is turned around and launched under its own power. Reverse thrust breaks the descent into the water. Waterborne, the R3Y slips free of the cradle and taxis out for takeoff and the flight to the transfer point where it will load troops and equipment. hundred miles southwest of the Mekong River. Latitude 10 degrees north. Longitude 97 degrees east. St. Matthews Island and Hastings Harbor. In this area along the Malay Peninsula are many sheltered bays where the R3Ys can be loaded for the flight to the Mekong. And if beaches are inaccessible or tied up by other traffic, mobile docks can be employed. The R3Y can be loaded directly from surface vessels. And with the loading completed, the docks can be broken down or towed to other locations. Once at the transfer point, the loading operation is a swift and simple maneuver, made possible by a unique feature of the R3Y, the bow door. When open, straight through access is provided to the cargo and personnel area. And the only gangplank necessary is the self-contained ramp. Like the bow door, the ramp is electrically operated and permanently attached to this airplane structure. Both the door and the ramp can be operated manually in an emergency. The unobstructed interior, 88 feet in length, 
can accommodate 103 fully equipped troops or split loads of troops, supplies, and equipment. For this hypothetical mission, each seaplane in the task force will carry a split load. And although the design of most military equipment limits the full carrying potential of the R3Y, the load for this seaplane will be a full platoon of Marines and their personal fighting gear, a 155 millimeter howitzer, a cleat track prime mover, and a reconnaissance vehicle for a total payload of 22 tons. The cleat track, the howitzer, and the weapons carrier are backed into the bow to facilitate unloading at the other end of the line. Loading completed, the seaplane prepares to get underway. No auxiliary craft are needed. The props are merely reversed, and the huge craft backs out of its berth as easily as an automobile. Once out of the U dock, the R3Y maneuvers to the takeoff lane under asymmetric power. As one airplane after another completes its loading and taxis out for takeoff, others in the task force move in to take on their troops and cargo. The overall task calls for moving a complete combat division comprised of 13,000 troops and their equipment. 55 R3Ys will do the job. Each will fly three round trips. The entire mission will be accomplished in 18 hours, availability time. The task force will supplement the fleet and land forces, which will make their way 400 miles inland by truck when they arrive along the Indochina coast from Manila. The flight plan will direct the task force to the Mekong over friendly territory all the way. Total flight time to the offload zone will be two hours after takeoff. is airborne. Destination, the Mekong, 575 miles to the northeast. Operational altitude, 22,000 feet. Cabin altitude, 5,500 feet. Speed, 270 knots. In a few hours after the sounding of the alert, fresh, combat-ready troops will be placed into the breach to halt the enemy's march south. Fighters can cover the flight all the way and can be used in support of the troops after they arrive. It is here the tanker version of the R3Y comes into play. This tanker can be used for topping off fuel tanks of airplanes starting on a strike or for refueling returning aircraft to extend loiter time over a carrier. Capable of refueling fighters at altitudes up to 25,000 feet, the tanker is equipped with four refueling hose reel units mounted on streamlined pods. The pods are positioned on each wing tip and beneath each outboard engine nacelle. Total fuel load is carried in wing tanks. The tanker can refuel each of four aircraft at the rate of 250 gallons a minute. are reeled into their pods. The tanker can then return to its refueling base, a base that can be a submarine, an oiler at sea, or a dock installation anywhere along the coast.
the task force itself moves steadily toward the offload zone. Flying at 22,000 feet, eight sources from the turboprop engines supply air for both cabin pressurization and air conditioning. Anti-icing is provided through stainless steel leading edges. Equipped to fly above the weather and operating over friendly territory throughout the flight, the task force has the tactical advantage of surprise. The enemy will find it difficult to pinpoint the offload zone, for the offload zone for the task force could stretch 1,600 miles. And unlike an ordinary runway installation, the many runways for the R3Y are almost impossible to destroy. Arriving over the target area, there would be a minimum of delay. Stacking or circling while waiting for a clear runway would be reduced. All seaplanes in the task force will land almost as a single ship, effecting complete surprise, momentum of assault, and speed of delivery. The R3Y has a high length beam ratio of 10. This permits a clean water entry and greatly reduces the spray pattern on landing. High wing hull attachments and location of nacelles above the wing upper surfaces prevents spray entry into the engine air inlets. expedite the unloading operation, the bow door is opened and the ramp extended while the seaplane moves into the beach. With power in the outboard engines, the seaplane is held perpendicular to the shore and the tail is prevented from swinging with the current. A large cutout in the bow door itself permits the pilot to guide the seaplane to its assigned beaching area. With fighter cover overhead, and by landing on a friendly beach 35 miles from the front lines, the flying task force is not vulnerable to attack. Although the banks of the Mekong were reported to be smooth by the UDT teams, a protective sheath has been designed to fit over the keel of the airplane and prevent hull and bottom damage in areas where beach conditions are unknown. Here, within two hours after takeoff, 55 R3Ys of Task Force 6 have landed with the troops and equipment to supplement the Navy's air, fleet, and amphibious arm. The value of the task force lies in the ability to deliver troops and equipment far inland and immediately. As each piece of heavy equipment is unloaded, the R3Y can move closer to the riverbank to facilitate the unloading of troops. Time required to unload the R3Y is less than five minutes. in flight, the troops are ready to move at once to the forward area and join the Indo-Chinese and other United Nations forces. And using another new tactic developed in modern warfare, the transshipment of the foot soldier and his equipment is accomplished entirely by air. Helicopters arriving from Basak and Siempang home in on their assigned loads strategically dispersed along the riverbank. The heavier equipment will use rudimentary roads to get to their objective.
flying over the roads or trails that are not satisfactory for fast land movements, the men and their supplies move north to combat. As part of the logistics fleet, the R-3Y and the helicopter have spearheaded an immediate counterattack, which will, in a few days, be expanded and built up by the amphibious fleet in mass retaliation. And although helicopters are an extension of the aerial supply line established by the task force, the R-3Y's role does not end with the delivery of troops on a beach 400 miles inland. There is the morale factor of swift evacuation of the wounded to well-equipped base hospitals. R-3Y's assigned to evacuate the wounded would be converted on the spot to hospital ships. So converted, these seaplanes can carry 92 litter patients together with 12 attendants on the return trip. Cargo carrier, troop transport, refueling tanker, hospital ship. Able to hit far inland with complete surprise, a true supplement to the naval air arm. The hypothetical situation you have just seen shows that the R-3Y was built for a definite purpose. Its peacetime uses are manifold. Its applications can give real authority to the United Nations job of maintaining peace. Retaliation with foot soldiers is now a matter of hours, not days. And military commands can dispatch this seaplane to almost any point in the world and say, go there.